looking around and saying, you guys shouting tonight. And I think I need to let the shout. My church might grow bigger. They should be doing all that stuff. And the guys are doing it, and it's just like a chain reaction. But sometimes we don't really understand that why we pray is therapeutic to what we're going through. We are changing things that are happening in our lives. You may not understand it, but you better leave me alone with a list of my answers. Because you don't know what I'm fighting on the inside. Man, we need to be found out some stuff. But we just say, I, I go around, I've been preaching, this is my new Monday. I'm going around I'm preaching about dealing with depression in church, stress, low self, low self esteem, because it's stuff that the church wants to hide away from. And I'm going to do it week in, week out, day in, day out, and it's facing The moment we heard about Bishop, I'm sorry for the time. The moment we heard about the death of my sister, there was a demonic activity that started because she hung herself. My my niece and my nephew started to hack her email account. You know, they're like 007 these days. They started to hack her account and they started to find out stuff that she started moving over to the occult and asking for help to get wealth and to get love and to get success. My God, my God. The devil is a liar. My God, the story cut short. Literally what she then started to do, she was selling about 800 pounds a month to these people on the internet. My God, these things are so easy. I've been studying this thing, man, and I've gone online and I've put in how to commit suicide. And it's so easy, the amount of options that you have. And it's attractive, and it pulls you in, and they tell you that love and all of those things is a myth. It doesn't exist. They obviously never met Jesus, the man from Calvary. Given this thing up a long time. My brother at the age of 26 was shot with a sort of shotgun in the chest. He died. I had more faith than Abraham. I stood in that morgue at 4 o'clock in the morning and I said, God, you said what we ask, we shall have. What we seek, we shall find. When the doors we knock and no door was open. But that don't change who God is. He's still God. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I didn't even bother to ask the question when my sister died. She was already dead five weeks. Amen. Lazarus is in the grave for four days. So I understood that she ain't getting up nowhere. But she made a decision. Then I started to look in the book of Kings, first Kings, and looking at Elijah, the prophet. And I started to understand that Elijah struggled with depression too. Because of the word of a woman by the name of Jezebel. My God. your request 
when you're calling him in the midst of confusion. Okay, he's having anger because you wouldn't understand it. You're not in the place to receive what he's going to say. You can understand for so come and say, don't worry about it, Pastor Steve. It's going to be all right. I just want to say, move out of my face. How are you going to tell me it's going to be all right? Is my sister going to come back tomorrow? Is my sister going to raise from the dead? No, she's not. But God knows, just give him a while. You need to go out sometime. Isolate yourself and just sleep. Touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, you got to go home this week and sleep. My God. Some of us don't sleep through the night. Every morning I'm waking up 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Some of us just need to sleep. Sleep that thing off. Just sleep and rest. Because you're trying to get a word. You need to sleep. That's what you need. To deliver yourself. So you can hear the word. That God's going to deliver you out. And you can receive it. Don't just say sleep man. And send angels to feed it. Make me eat the right stuff. You better get the right stuff. Change your diet. And sleep. And eat. And sleep. And eat. Because after a while, God wakes him up and he says, Now you're in the place that I can be with you. I don't want to preach this today. But God says, Now you're in the place where I can be with you. So he now says, Okay, you wanted to talk to me. Tell me what's going on. And so Elijah begins to speak. After God feeds him and he rests, and Elijah begins to speak, and he begins to understand, we understand from the text, that he is now, he's got it all wrong. Because what he's thinking is, I'm the only one. We've done killed all of the prophets, and all your people have turned from you, and now I'm the only one that's left. The devil is a liar. Yeah. The devil is a liar. He was the only one. But this is what happens when you're going through depression. Your mind begins to tell you stuff. On the Wednesday, I had a visitation of demonic activity. Oh my, oh my God, I was speaking to the bishop, I told you, that I could see stuff happening right in my face. And I'm saying to myself, oh my God, what's going on? And you know the only breakthrough I had? I had to declare God's realness and God's rightful place. I couldn't just say it in my mind. I had to declare it publicly. Lord, you are the one and the true and the living God. There is no God like you. I'm seeing people like people happening all in my face. I'm saying there is no God like my God. Somebody hung a praise in here. Night time. Usually wake up. This is a pastor. Night time, I used to wake up and I'm thirsty, go downstairs, get a drink. I'm debating with myself. Oh Say, Steve, you're not really that thirsty. Maybe you'll just leave it till the morning. I was a little bit on the edge because I understood what was I seen business walk right past me in the, in the room. Can you imagine? This the pastor. You should come to the pastor's home. Amen. But he came to the right place and to the right person because I would not let no weapon that is strong against me. The Bible said, so, I stood in the mirror, and the question I wanted to ask is, God, why? And then a song was birthed. She's my sister. Oh, Lord, in all of this, you're worthy. In all of this, you're worthy. It's God who just sent me up for the viewing of the body. I had to go and view this body. And I was selected by the family. I'm the youngest now. I'm the youngest. I'm the youngest. My God, I've got to go. We didn't want mom and dad to do it, but nobody wanted to do it. So I had to do it. And I go into the uh, morgue in the bottom of the hospital, and they tell me, bring me down to the lower ground. And as we get down to the lower ground, I'm literally from the distance from where the balcony is to where I am. I can smell a stench that I've never smelled in my life. I said to the, to the mortician, I said, is that her? And he said, yes. She's been dead for five weeks. And the crazy thing about it, so I stop. The crazy oh. thing about it. crazy thing about it, I need to finish this another time. That she left letters. The letters were there. And so when I go in, I'm smelling this stench and I'm trying to deal with the smell that I'm smelling. And trying to focus my trying to deal with the fact that I've got to view her, to identify her. And essentially, she's got another thing that 
they're waiting for me. When I go in, and my mind is just all over the place. And I'm trying to read the letter. It took me about 15 minutes to read four pages of that. And I'm saying, God, this is messed up. This is messed up. And when I finish reading the letter, they say, I'm trying to just pace around. I'm like, okay, I'm trying to get myself ready because an idea is going to view. And they say, you ready? I said, uh, yeah, about five minutes later, I was ready. And I went in, they told me I went to go in, she put me in a table, and I'm expecting it to be quite a deep room. And at the moment they open the door, she's like laying there right in front of me. Wow. And so I go in there, and he's standing with me, and I'm looking at the body. Her head's about this size, because it's small. And her body, I didn't even notice the body, and her feet was just black as black as black could be. Her body, I've never seen anybody so black. Every toenail was painted a different color. And I said, Lord God, this is, have mercy on her soul. My God. You want to pray? You think you can pray through it? Oh, you got to make up your mind that if you're going to walk with God, it's going to be for life. Yes, sir. For always. In spite of, no matter what. Yes, because it's going to challenge you. Yes, your faith is going to be challenged. So why do you have the misunderstanding that he's the only one left? God cleans him up, feeds him. And then after he finished communicating with God, God has to put him right. God says, guess what, Elijah? There is over 7,000 that are waiting that have not bowed to the enemy. And in closing, what God is going to do, he's going to deliver you from what you're going through. My God. And he's going to send you right back to the place yes, where you sir. came from. So that you can deliver somebody else. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Come on, praise God, everybody. Oh, come on, come on, give it praise.